when you were a kid, it was, Mom, just five more minutes. Now, you're pounding that snooze button once, or let's be real, multiple times. I get it, you want a little more shut-eye. Just five more minutes of fuel in the form of sleep, but think twice next time you fill your phone with 10 different alarms. Now, I don't need to tell you that sleep is super duper important. It's been proven by all kinds of studies that a regular healthy dose of Z's gives your body much needed rest and recovery. Plus, it allows your brain to work at its fullest. If you wake up without or before the alarm, you feel refreshed and ready to tackle the day. Yeah, sounds great. But why don't we always wake up like this? Well, you know how it goes. A busy schedule, working late hours, exhaustion, anxiety, you name it. All these things can disrupt your sleep, causing you all kinds of problems. And one of the most annoying of those is feeling sleepy right after you wake up and even for most of the day. Any ideas why this happens to you more often than not? No, it's not because of a lack of sleep. It's because you keep hitting that snooze button like it's your job. Wait, hang on. How can sleeping a little longer make you even more tired? It all has to do with the fact that sleep is divided into cycles, each lasting about an hour and a half. When you finally doze off, your brain enters the first cycle, then the second, and so on, until it's well rested and ready to wake up, which is usually after four cycles or so. Therefore, you need at least six hours of sleep per day to feel okay. To feel great though, you need about two extra hours on top of that for your brain to enter its optimal state, giving you a total of around eight hours. Those two hours are when your brain is getting ready for the day, and it's exactly after this period that you wake up without any help. Of course, when you've only slept about four or five hours, you feel groggy and sleepy anyway, and your alarm will just irritate you. That's why we all either hit the snooze button or just set a bunch of alarms in advance each going off 10 or 15 minutes after the previous one. So, you've been rudely awakened by this annoying sound, and you don't feel like rising and shining. I can totally relate to that. But what you actually do when you hit the snooze button is go off into a new sleep cycle. Remember how long those last? Right, about an hour and a half. So, basically, if you don't get another 90 minutes of sleep after snoozing, you'll feel even worse for it. Waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle breaks your sleep pattern, confusing your brain and making it think you still have time to catch those missing Z's. And when you go in and out of a cycle repeatedly, that poor brain of yours just goes unhinged and ceases to understand where it is and what it should do. Ever felt disorientated in the morning? Like, where am I? Who am I? What's going on? Give me a like if you have. Strength in numbers. <laughs> anyway. That foggy state you get up in after you've hit snooze for 10 more minutes is called sleep inertia. Remember learning about inertia in school? Well, here, it refers to your brain being unable to shake off the sleep and going straight into autopilot. For you, it means that you feel like going back to bed. You can't concentrate, can't make decisions, and generally want everyone to get out of your face. And here's the real heartbreaker. No amount of coffee will pull you out of this state. It might only make you feel worse, for that matter. At best, it'll give you a short energy boost that'll just disappear in a couple of hours. But in the worst case scenario, it might simply thrash your nervous system without that awareness boost you crave. Medline Plus says that caffeine, especially in high doses, can cause jitters, anxiety, and an increased heart rate. Yeah, imagine a rush of all that into your blood while your brain is still trying to figure out where your phone is, even though you're holding it in your hand. No thanks. But it gets worse. Sorry. How long do you think sleep inertia lasts? You might assume, pretty logically, that it'd be the same as one sleep cycle because that's what your brain missed out on, right? Uh, not quite. In sleep mode, your brain actively restores your mind and body. When you're awake though, it's busy multitasking with both restoration and daily activities. So it needs a lot more time to become fully focused. Namely, it requires four full hours to get your gears turning. Basically, you won't be able to do anything apart from the simplest tasks until lunch. After that, with luck, you'll finally be ready to start your normal day, but you'll already have wasted half of it. With sleep inertia and a brain that hasn't fully woken up, you might find yourself forgetting certain things you do every morning. Have you ever tried to remember whether or not you locked the front door? 
That's because you did it automatically, without thinking it through, and your brain didn't think it was necessary to register such a usual thing. The more rituals you have, the more you'll forget with time. Sounds pretty scary, right? So what should you do to get rid of sleep inertia? One of the best ways to pull your brain out of this fog is a nice shock. No, not an electric shock, of course, although that'll probably do the trick too. You need to shake off the sleep and make your brain and body come in sync again and what could tackle the job better than a cold shower? Actually, to raise your alertness, you don't even need a full-on shower. You only have to cool down your hands and feet. At least that's what a study by sleep expert Dr. Cassie Hilditch suggests. Another, way less chilly, way to wake up in a better state of mind is to turn on loud music. I mean, it's pretty obvious how it works. Sound doesn't let you sleep, especially when it's loud. So if you turn on your favorite tunes, your brain will start dancing to the beat, registering the new information, and waking up on the go. Again, this is from that same study by Dr. Hilditch. Of course, any sound that's loud enough will do, but your go-to playlist is the best choice, since your brain will start pumping out endorphins as well. These hormones help put you in a good mood. Hey, wake up your brain and put a smile on your face at the same time. Win-win. A cold shock and sound stimulation are nice, but they work best if combined with one more method, and that's exposure to morning sunlight. Again, it all comes down to hormones. When it's dark, your body starts producing melatonin, which is your brain's main sleep hormone that gets you ready for shut-eye. That's why sleep experts recommend removing all sources of light from your bedroom if you want good quality sleep, but that's for when you're hitting the sack. Right now, I'm talking about the opposite, waking your brain up in the morning. So, obviously, you need more light for that. Even through closed lids, your eyes register the change of lighting and send a signal to the brain. When the sun is shining into your face, that melatonin starts to dissipate and your brain gets pulled out of slumber naturally. So, if you're dealing with sleep inertia, remember that you can combine all three of these methods for guaranteed success, cold, loud music, and bright morning light. And it'd be pretty easy to do them all at once. Check it out. As soon as your first and only alarm goes off, get up, pull the blinds or curtains wide open, put on your favorite music, and jump into a cool shower. That should set you up for a productive day ahead. What are your morning rituals to wake up easily? Share your tips in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a like, send it to a friend, and click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life.